Namaste, welcome to season three, episode 16 of TT Talks. My name is Suhas, and today we have a special guest. Namaste, Satyakal, Salam Alaikum. My name is Gyanam. And so, Dr. Mahajan, so could you tell us a little bit about yourself and kind of your introduction into academia? Oh, um, so uh, I'm a linguist. My PhD is in linguistics. Mm-hmm. Uh, my PhD is in theoretical linguistics. And I am uh, into second language teaching and acquisition. Uh-huh. And I am uh, in academia, my primary emphasis has been on using universal rules of linguistics in teaching of languages, especially a language like a like Hindi Urdu, mm-hmm. uh, which we call a well-behaved language. And um, lastly, I think my recent uh, emphasis in research is on the pedagogy of solidarity and resistance. Oh, wow. Okay. Gotcha. So let, let's, that was a lot of information. Let's kind of, let's, I want to learn as much as I can. So let's, let's start. Um, so how did you kind of um, become interested in linguistics? How did you know that you wanted to pursue that into the future? All right. So that would be um, decades ago, <laughs> um, you know, uh, because I, I finished high school uh, 50 years ago. Okay. So in uh, India, um, you know, after high school, at that time, you couldn't go directly into linguistics. And okay. I became uh, interested in linguistics because of uh, uh, Noam Chomsky. So Professor Noam Chomsky, who is known as the Einstein of linguistics, uh-huh. uh, I've been reading uh, both his uh, work on language and the mind and also his uh, his writings on uh, I, I, the, the politics of uh, this country and the world mm-hmm. and uh, or the role of the United States in world uh, politics okay. and uh, Chomsky's uh, you know rather uh, social justice issues based uh, version or opinion on uh, current affairs. Gotcha, gotcha. And so that's kind of what stimulated into the world of linguistics, right? That's right. Because of Chomsky, and it was mind-boggling to uh, realize that uh, language isn't really all learned. So it's not learned behavior, but uh, we're born with a certain uh, unit uh, mm-hmm. you know, and then it just uh, flourishes and it is specific to human beings and its interaction with uh, our minds. So brain and mind, cognition and uh, language. That's okay. how I got interested into. Gotcha. Linguistics. Gotcha. And so what kind of pursued you to focus more on South Asian linguistics rather than general linguistics? Well, uh, no, I think in uh, India, mm-hmm. I did do uh, theoretical Chomskyan okay. uh, linguistics. Uh-huh. And, uh, uh, but because I was lucky enough to be in the best South Asian linguistics department at the time, uh-huh. Delhi University, Arts Faculty Department of Linguistics was one of the best uh, departments in the world uh, covering South Asian uh-huh. Uh, linguistics and doing Chomskyan linguistics. Okay. So the South Asian part was, you know, we had a couple of very uh, good Indo-Europeanists, you know, people who were able to talk about um, Vedic Sanskrit, classical mm-hmm. Sanskrit, comment on, um, you know, Panini, who was a grammarian roughly in the 3rd century BCE. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, and a lot of the features that Parnini uh, developed uh, are used even today in modern linguistics. Really? So I was very lucky to be trained by a very well-known Parninist of his times, and wow. a grammarian uh, Indian 
grammar traditions or Indian, uh-huh. uh, uh, um, you know, phonology traditions, etc. So okay. that's how I uh, got both the Chomsky and linguistics part yeah. and the Indian grammatical traditions uh, part. Gotcha. Okay. Wow. And so, so you te- currently teach courses in Hindi, Hindi, Urdu. Is there anything else? Uh, right. And so for me, uh, Hindi Urdu is one common language. Okay. So sometimes I call it Hinurglish. Hinurglish? Uh, Hinurglish, like a combination of Hindi Urdu and English. Oh, uh, right? okay. So instead of it being just Hinglish, it yeah. is Hinurglish. And that just simply means that uh, we do common spoken uh-huh. language rather than some, uh, you know, stupid variety of extreme uh weird hindi uh-huh. you know using words that no one uses yeah. or um uh you know khales urdu or pure urdu that again no one really uses uh, so we don't translate every word we keep using common you commonly used english words so i call the language in urdlish uh-huh. um and in a, and we teach both scripts from day one mm-hmm because that's the only difference or whatever, or it's one language with two different scripts, so we teach both scripts. Uh In addition, I teach uh, courses on, uh, you know, typology of languages of the uh, South Asian uh, area. Mm -hmm. Uh, We we look at contact languages and linguistic areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, I try to look at linguistic landscapes of South Asia. Mm -hmm. Uh, I teach courses on uh, cultures Uh um, of uh, South Asia, especially um, through uh, Bollywood and other forms of uh, media. Uh we look at, uh, I teach a course on representation of uh, South Asians in Bollywood uh-huh. and in Hollywood and what are they really like in Westwood, uh, which oh, wow. is where UCLA is. So we call the course Hollywood, Bollywood and Westwood. Wow. Um, okay. So uh, I also um, uh, teach courses on Southeast Asia, mm-hmm. and one last bit is uh, not really teaching related, yeah. but I provide training to uh, language instructors uh-huh. on uh, EDI, equity, diversity, and inclusion, yeah. and you know how to be an anti-racist language educator, uh-huh. uh, or uh, how to uh, build in pedagogy of solidarity and resistance in the language classrooms. Wow, wow. So it sounds like you're very involved in the UCLA language department, right? Especially in your areas of expertise. So in your courses specifically, like um, Hinorglish, is it Hinorglish? Is that his? Hinorglish? Yeah, Hindi uh, Urdu. Yeah. <laughs> so in those courses, like level one, level two, level three, do you see a primary, like are the primary students of like South Asian descent or are they kind of new people kind of exploring the culture? Uh, We get a mix of students, especially since we made it uh, in English. Uh Various people feel welcome Uh uh, in the class since we don't, we're very inclusive, Mm -hmm. we're very Uh diversity-based. We uh, not only make it a point not to, uh, you know, differentiate between Hindi, Urdu and all and the fact that we're talking about common spoken uh, in English, mm-hmm. right? Uh, even casual people uh, who come to know about the class uh-huh. uh, will come in. Uh, I must point out that South Asian is not only not a major at UCLA, uh-huh. it's not even a minor. Oh. So basically, our uh, course counts for no. Uh, major requirements except for a one-year foreign language uh, requirement. Uh-huh. Um, however, so, you know, the, the reason why people come in is because we market the class as an EDI uh, class, which is promoting um, South Asia through interactions with uh, student experiences at UCLA, uh-huh. and it it 
it allows them uh, an opportunity to engage with their own selves in their own way, uh -huh. connected to uh, different majors in their own way, to be able to get, uh, you know, uh, whatever they need from the course. For example, we allow them, uh, you know, options of topics, etc., or the way that they can uh, participate mm -hmm. in the course, uh, depending on what they need from the course, rather than set things like, you must do this, you must do gotcha. this, 10% for this, or 20% for this, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, it's very, very fluid, mm -hmm. and um, we co-opt uh -huh. the students. And I'm saying all this only because uh, perhaps this explains why we have very large uh, first year classes mm -hmm. of up to 100 students in our oh first year God. class. Wow. Um, and the reason is because all kinds of students feel welcome to come in. But it is true that a large uh, percentage of the students are uh, you know, their parents or someone uh, close to them, um, you know, our favorite uh, line is, you know, significant others or insignificant others. Uh -huh. um, you know, someone they know might be from uh, South Asia. Yeah. Uh, or they might be curious about South Asia. Um, or they're you know, by now, maybe their grandparents or someone may not directly be from South Asia, but might be uh, from the region? associated or uh -huh. self-identifying with a feature of South Asian-ness. Oh, okay. So it's pretty broad. I, mean, you know, I, I, I do mention that we get really random people uh, <laughs> taking the class. There was a, a student who, you know, on the first day, by mistake came into the class, right? Uh -huh. He was looking for his physics class and he saw a class of 100 students. Yeah. It never occurred to him that it might be a language class. Uh -huh. And he just sat through the first class and then he enrolled. He's wow. like, this sounds like too much fun. My other favorite example is, um, you know, we broadcast our classes for the last, whatever, 15 years, you know, um, someone would come in and video record the class and uh -huh. we would post it to the course website and we were doing this, you know, 15 years ago. Uh -huh. um, and the, the, the random camera person, a student who used to come and record it, yeah. you know, after two weeks, uh, he's like, you know, I'm enjoying this so much, I might as well enroll. Oh, so, wow. You know, we get, um, we, we get all kinds of people coming in for all kinds of reasons. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, and so, kind of so about those lines, right? So, my university, we don't offer any language courses besides, I think, the basic, you know, Spanish, French, German, the primarily European languages, right? So, why is it important for individuals to be educated of non European and more, you know, South Asian or Southeast Asian or South American languages? Why is that important? Um, so, first of all, I think um, your perspectives change. Mm -hmm. Now, it does depend on the instructor, by the way. Mm -hmm. You know, some uh, people can kill a language <laughs> course. Yeah. Uh, for example, even at UCLA, right, in the 70s, yeah. they did offer a uh, quote-unquote Hindi course. Uh -huh. But they did what many... Um, universities do you know in uh what's that penny uh what uh penny wise pound foolish in trying to uh offer hindi the cheap way okay they just hired some auntie g or some uncle g would come in and uh teach this course at ucla which is you know a premier public university uh -huh. large very um very successful yes. public university with uh -huh. very high academic standards. Uh -huh. And so the, these people who came in to teach the language course made it so non-academic and so uh, um, 
so infantile almost, you know, they uh-huh. have this impression that you have to make it fun, so they'll go, ga, 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 you know, whatever, they're singing yeah. songs. I mean, that's not what students want. Uh-huh. And um, so, and that's not what the university should have done. Yes. And so consequently it collapsed and then it took us 20 years to restart it. Uh-huh. Uh, so all, all I'm trying to say is um, uh, with the right kind of people teaching it, uh-huh. students realize that their perspectives are expanding, yes. their opportunities are expanding, uh-huh. they are uh, growing as students. So one of the first things on my syllabus is this course promotes critical thinking skills. So, you know, we don't merely teach the language. I am developing a program what's called Language Humanities. That means that we teach a language course like a humanities course. So our primary goal should be to promote critical thinking skills, to teach them, you know, what is argumentation, um, to teach them how to analyze or uh, look at uh, uh, figures or mm-hmm. how to analyze them, how to uh, talk about it. Uh-huh. Now we're doing it in uh, in English, but many students haven't even done it in English, right? Uh-huh. So it's the first time they come and they learn that um, it, it's it's it, when you have a question, you can't simply respond with anything you like, uh-huh. even if it is a one line answer. It has to be relevant. It has to be something, you know, linked to your yes. major or something, right? Uh-huh. So they start, like, you ask someone, uh, a pre-med student or an engineering student, I and mean, that's what we get, yeah. you know, a lot of students from STEM, right? And you ask them to talk about a particular course uh-huh. that they are taking in STEM. I'm telling you, they can't even talk about it in English, right? <laughs> <laughs> so they can't tell you more than repeating maybe a line from the syllabus or something like uh-huh. that. And you ask them, why is it important to do that? And they get stuck, right? Uh-huh. Let alone talking about why is it important to uh, study a language. Yeah. What they realize is their Hindi Urdu course is making them think about their courses in their major. Yeah. In linking them up to their... Uh, expected goals from their STEM classes mm-hmm. more than the grades, right? Yeah. You ask them, what do you need from your physics class? Oh, I need an A grade. Yeah, but you know, what do you yeah. want to learn from there? Uh-huh. Right? They will not be able to complete that, but they will be able to comment on it after taking a language humanities class. Oh. They will learn, you know, what is an argument or um, quite frankly, um, they learn how to write, let's say, their uh, med school statement of purpose or uh-huh. something like that, because suddenly it becomes clear to them the reason. Know, yeah. What are they? What do they need from a university education? Yes. They learn how to be a good student. Now you know you might think that I'm being uh, too um, ambitious or whatever <laughs> with my goals. And uh, you may think I'm talking, you know, in the clouds or whatever. Part of it, yes. But unless I try to go for it, the students they won't, know, yeah. will not see or realize the goal of the language class. Uh-huh. So, you know, um, going back to your basic question in a very roundabout <laughs> way, uh, why should a... Uh, a program or university offer a course in Hindi Urdu is to make their students better students, to make their students get more out of the courses that are already being offered to them, Mm -hmm. to make their students uh, expand their uh, perspectives, viewpoints, to teach their students to uh, interact with different communities. Mm-hmm. You know, even if a, someone is from the South Asian community, they have very superficially engaged with South Asian languages and cultures. Mm-hmm. Even through one language, like Hinoglu, 
English. Yes. We encourage our students to associate with all South Asian languages. We point out that South Asia is rich in language families mm -hmm. and languages. And here is a small way to engage with the area, with the languages, with the perspectives, with the viewpoints, with the landscape, mm -hmm. which very importantly includes a linguistic landscape. Mm -hmm. What do I mean by that? You know, uh, we already know the Roman script. Just by learning the Devanagari Hindi script, our perspectives expand because now you can read Nepali, Marathi, mm -hmm. and with a little bit of thing, you can learn many other related scripts of uh, South Asia, uh -huh. including, and these are Northern Brahmi, but including, you know, uh, Southern Brahmi. Uh -huh. And guess what? If you learn the Hindi script, you can pick up uh, the Japanese script like that. Yes, yeah. It is much easier to learn the Thai script, etc. Uh -huh. What about the Urdu script? You learn the Urdu script, first of all, you know, when you see uh, the Arabic script, the Persian script and all, you don't get anxious, right? Yes. Which is what we are taught or it, it is, there's this unconscious bias okay uh, in us right on the other hand just learning the urdu script in a language class you're a changed person uh-huh you you go down westwood boulevard you see the you know kebab signs in uh persian kebab signs in yeah. uh, the script you're able to read it you fly uh emirates or uh you know qatar airlines uh -huh. all these things. you know you go through the you can read uh, the, the sign, just the level of uh, becoming a, uh, a more um, aware uh -huh. human being, you know, and becoming a, uh, someone with a, um, it promotes, let's say, allyships, it promotes inter-community interactions you look at people who are people and situations and all uh, differently mm -hmm. in addition to of course connecting up to your own majors and your goals at a university gotcha so it's kind of even taking one language many class it gives you the avenue to learn so many more because you have those skills and those same analysis skills from taking that one course that's exactly correct and what you mentioned is uh, you know, it is good to take Spanish. No one is saying don't take yes. it. But we're just saying that if you're going to stay with one small group of languages at a university, yeah. then you're missing out on opportunities to uh, have a better student. Gotcha. And that's why actually sometimes a lot of uh, young professionals come to our courses uh, through UCLA Extension uh -huh. uh, because they missed the opportunities and uh, we get a lot of what are called senior scholars which means people who are over uh, 55 uh -huh. UCLA gives them in the community yeah they give them a special uh, program and special uh, discounted uh, tuition uh -huh. and we get a lot of non South Asian you know doctors and other people taking our course through the senior scholars program wow okay so people are coming back even like after their careers are like you know in progress and like like at the peak of their career that they want to learn more about cultures that are different from theirs that, that that's exactly right and uh, um you know earlier it could also be that um you know, I used to go out into the community giving talks and mm -hmm. uh, into the community or even professional organizations like the American uh, Psychology Association, APA, Psychological uh -huh. Association, where I would give a talk to all the psychologists, uh -huh. uh, professional psychologists, because they were getting uh, patients, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or they were consulting uh, with people on... Um, 
people with different backgrounds, like their South Asian background, mm -hmm. but they didn't know anything about them, right? Oh, okay. So then I would go out into the community and say, that how can you uh, counsel someone unless you know more about the the South Asian languages and cultures? Exactly. Um, so for me, by the way, there is no South Asian culture. It doesn't mm -hmm. exist. Mm -hmm. We do have South Asian cultures. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And gotcha. even this, I'm not uh, a Hindi wala uh -huh. in the sense of you know Hindi and nothing else. Yes. Um, and, which is a mistake that programs and people make. Okay. But anyways, um, so uh, once the word spread that uh, you know you can come in and through the through in English uh -huh. interact with. Um, different communities, different types of people, different students, different issues, mm -hmm. different regions. Right? Yeah. That is so interesting. Wow. And you also mentioned in your course that you included a lot of resources from media, right? From like movies, Bollywood, Hollywood, Westwood. So what is your opinion about people kind of creating stereotypes in media of South Asian characters or people of that heritage or descent? Right. So, uh, and, um, you know, so Hollywood has always had this Orientalist perspective. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we start from with uh, movies like uh, The Party yep. with Peter Sellers. Uh -huh. um, you know, very Orientalist, uh, mm -hmm. you know, this uh, buffoon of a person. Uh -huh. um, uh, uh, someone who is very othered. Uh -huh. you know, um, quite a lot of it is on purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we talk about how actually the Peter Sellers character was the basis for uh, Apu in uh, The Simpsons. Uh, sounding the way he does, Apu Nahasapima Petalon from The Simpsons, the voice was done by Hank Azaria, uh -huh. who based this accent not on any South Asians around him, uh -huh. but on the Peter Sellers character doing a South Asian accent. Uh, uh, um, you know, an accent based on an accent. On an accent, yeah. By someone who was trying to uh, basically make fun of mm -hmm. South Asians, right? Yeah. And so we come from there to uh, Hari Kondabolu and talking about, you know, Kalpin was a student of mine. Uh, and so we've gone through all this about how um, Kalpin, uh, you know, refused to do the Indian accent anymore mm -hmm. because it was so alien to him. He yeah. used to really ask me, what does it sound like? Or what is it? Or, mm -hmm. And I don't want to mention names, but there are some movies where I trained uh, the person in uh, Indian English. These are people who were born and brought up here and they mm -hmm. don't have that uh, accent. On the other hand, um, you know, I am very careful not to sound like Apu from The Simpsons or like Peter Sellers, uh -huh. but to go for real South Asian English, um, uh, which is uh, non-exoticized, non-trivialized yeah. you know, uh, accent. Um, and But at the same time, one of the things people forget is Bollywood is terrible. Really? South Asian representation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and Bollywood is even worse when it comes to so-called NRIs, non-resident Indians. So we are very careful mm -hmm. not to uh, randomly take stuff from uh, Bollywood in our mm -hmm. language class mm -hmm. because people don't have the language level to uh, discuss you know, um, to discuss the problems, mm -hmm. it can only be done in English, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So I do it in my Hollywood, Bollywood, Westwood class, but uh, I was just at a conference and one of my dear colleagues was uh, giving me an example of a Bollywood song in their language course. Mm -hmm. And that song was... Um, 
तू चीज बड़ी है मस्त मस्त या आई मीन आई कैन नॉट थिंक ऑफ ए वर्स um sexist uh stereotypical anti woman song mm-hmm. than this and in order to uh point out what the bollywood song means mm-hmm. you know i will get into a nasty lecture not nasty lecture but the topic will be not very pleasant mm-hmm. and then i can't do it in in urdu it will be lost on the people mm-hmm. so uh because these are people who come to my classes right the one yeah. who class and they'll say kuch kuch hota hai oh such a lovely movie and i go what are you talking about or um what was that movie um dilwale dulhaniya le jayenge oh you know, terrible movies yeah. that can only be discussed in a uh film class yes so, Film based, based uh, language and culture class. Mm-hmm. Uh, these are not just uh, sexist, anti-woman, etc. But for example, the Lalit Dulhaniya le jayenge. People will say, "Oh, they're de- what celebrating Punjab? It's such a good movie. What are you talking about? They show you real Punjab and how to, you know, enjoy uh, or uh, appreciate Punjab." and you know what not a single sikh in that movie uh, like they it's about it's a movie about going back to punjab uh-huh. fighting for punjab showing you the uh, rural life in punjab the good people of punjab not a single sikh really wow so imagine the kind of a uh, weird representation yes it is a vision rep Yes, it is talking about Punjab. But did, will an instructor ever point out that hey, where are the Sikhs? You know. Wow. And so um, I always get concerned about this using Bollywood, or I'm not sure about uh, people who always call their class language and cultures uh-huh. or culture. That oh, I teach Hindi language and culture. I'm very scared of what culture are they teaching? Yeah. Wow. I didn't know. Wow. Okay. Right. So uh, all I'm saying is it is um uh, yes, it is great to pick out Bollywood things, but you have to be very careful. Yes. And uh you know, first year, first quarter, you can uh only do like two line clips of very sanitized uh things because uh, uh otherwise it will have the opposite effect mhm yeah what your goals might be. exactly exactly you don't want to kind of make it inappropriate right you don't want these movies to be inappropriate representations of south asian culture right you want to choose actually good sources and media that actually correctly represents you know the characters and kind of having people of the culture being represented in that piece of media right like for example that and yes and we have to be very careful uh that we have to be very aware of media's role yes in what i have been calling as a recent paper that i am working on research project manufactured identity mhm so uh what what they are uh promoting is uh, through the five filters of manufactured identity uh-huh you know so they are um creating symbols mm-hmm. and then um stereotyping them reinforcing them um you know telling for example telling nris what they should be like right mm-hmm. so um you know, who is a good nri yeah i mean i don't need bollywood to tell me that yeah and they're also very um judgmental mm-hmm. and so they will um they will make broad generalizations about nris mm-hmm. for example and they'll sh- depict this in their movies right yeah like nri uh young women are all into drinking uh you know and are um they are uh from 
promiscuous, uh, they don't have enough clothes to wear, mm -hmm. um, the, they are, uh, you know, uh, etc. Et yes, yeah. A lot of negative stereotypes. Uh huh. And what Bollywood is trying to say is until they start singing the national anthem of India or something, now they're good people or they oh. start wearing a sari. Now they're good people. I mean, this is what uh, something like Kabi Khushi Kabi Ram or yeah. the faith, right? Uh, the initial introduction to this uh, character is this quote unquote westernized uh, uh, young woman or young girl, right? Mm -hmm. But then none of my students would associate with that figure, yes, right? Yeah. I mean, my students are both men and young men and young women. Mm -hmm. My students are very hardworking uh, students. Uh -huh. They spend their four years slogging mm -hmm. uh, uh, through the courses. But you talk to anybody in uh, India, let alone Bollywood, yeah. right? Or maybe they've been watching Bollywood uh, so long. They, they have this impression that people don't need to study or they don't study, they just party. Yeah. Not to anybody from uh, uh, India, they'll tell you this. Yeah. Same thing with Pakistan, by the way. Uh huh. Pakistani students who are in Pakistan until they come over, right? Mm -hmm. They have this impression that it's all a, a piece of cake, you know, all of our uh, kids, you know, that. Oh, you see it? Oh, it's uh, you know, it's very difficult to get into X Y Z something from Pakistan or India, but they don't realize how difficult it is to get into a good university here. Yes, you know, or they don't appreciate it. So back to your question, which is that this um, uh, creating symbols of uh, identity mm -hmm. and then forcing people to uh, live up to those yes or adopt those symbols um and the second part of it by the way i mentioned five filters media is also um it has a devastating effect because of what we call or henry Giroux calls manufactured mm -hmm. ignorance so it is meant to actually create ignorance rather than inform people mm -hmm. of what life might be like, what people might be like, what values uh, people may have, mm -hmm. you know, uh, will be so this manufactured ignorance takes you far away from that yeah. into uh, a created set of um, Symbols and other uh, and other uh, representations that are far removed from reality and have a very dark uh, purpose. Gotcha! Wow, that that's and that just sounds like it's just the tip of the iceberg, right? And there's so much yet to be talked about and yet to be you know communicated with about, and which is crazy. Wow, to think about. True, and I think this is what. Uh, brings about a difference mm -hmm. between uh, my students' generation, the young yes. American South Asians, mm -hmm. we call them Desis, yeah. the young Desi students, and their parents are uh, one and a half generations up. Mm -hmm. I think my students are a far more informed, uh, far more really educated, educated mm -hmm. far more uh you know just better human beings able to reflect on their role um in this uh country their role as in citizenship participation mm -hmm. in uh, social justice issues in being part of a vibrant growing uh future uh, community forward uh, looking and forward thinking uh, set of people who are far more inclusive, diverse, mm -hmm. and they are far more uh, egalitarian. Uh -huh. And they are far better um, 
citizens mm -hmm. uh, of the world. Gotcha. Wow, that is that is a very important point. Wow, <laughs> something to, for us all to reflect on. Wow. <laughs> so Guruji Mahajan, um, as we kind of tie kind of tie up the podcast and kind of you know recap everything that we've talked about, what is one thing that you want the audience to kind of learn and leave this podcast understanding? Like kind of your one teaching and moral that you want them to leave while listening to this podcast. And thank you for calling me Guruji Mahajan. I think it is just uh, very important to acknowledge that uh, women can be uh, scholars and uh, gurus yeah. and that there is no better word uh, to refer to a language educator uh, than Guruji mm -hmm. uh, for uh, South Asians. Um, so my one thing would be uh, to truly believe in being more, um, you know, inclusive, mm -hmm. uh, to believe in egality, mm -hmm. and to believe in allyships, in mm -hmm. communicating or reaching out or interacting with other uh, minority communities, mm -hmm. and to always be uh, open mm -hmm. to self-reflection mm -hmm. and truly changing yourself in order to become a better citizen and i don't mean passport uh citizen mm -hmm. but as someone who participates in a socially just uh and egalitarian world around us many of us have the means and opportunities to do so but uh, so i just want us to reflect on ourselves and just become better people just become that's it just kind of become more aware of the people around us and kind of their backgrounds when we're working with them when we're referring to them when we're communicating with them and stop pitying yourself or stop saying we do this we that you, your we should be a larger inclusive uh we okay. let alone within the <laughs> our amongst different communities mm -hmm. but even within our own community we rarely reach out to people who are even a little bit different from us mm -hmm. you know we get divided up into smaller and smaller and smaller groups you know uh so go for the hinurglish spirit that was that was awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Guruji. I definitely learned a lot and I will definitely be practicing kind of just learning more about just in general, learning more about other people's cultures, other people's languages, other people's identities. And that I feel like is very important, especially in college and how you're going to apply that to the real world. Good. Thank you very awesome. much for this uh, opportunity. <laughs> and, you know, uh, I keep saying solidarity mm -hmm. and uh, usually we end our uh, classes with live long and prosper live long. <laughs> <laughs> i can't do that but <laughs> i'll try yeah, no one can see you it's a podcast <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you so much have a good rest of your day you too bye-bye bye-bye thank you